Hey, what's up guys? Paulo Munoz here from SeaRushGuides.com and welcome to this mini-series of some of my favorite features of SeaRush 2021.6.2 update. So rather than give you a rundown of every single feature and, and what they do and you know explain it bit by bit of what they are, I thought I'd do a, a series where I, I can actually show you practical examples of how I would use those features in, you know, like in a real world scenario, like using it uh, to enhance my sculptures or to, you know, to design or anything like that. So the first one that I'm going to start this series with is the ambient occlusion, the ray trace ambient occlusion, which is a fantastic addition and can be used in a bunch of different ways. So I'm going to show you how to use um, that feature to generate something like that. Let me just isolate that head of this creature and combine this material so that you have these kind of like golden bits and pieces in the crevices and, and all of that. So it's a pretty cool effect and it's all achieved with the ambient occlusion and I'll show you how to do that. Um, yeah, so just so you know, this creature is uh, one of the concepts that, I'm, that I've been working on my uh, 3D snippets, which is my Patreon. So if you're interested, I'll put a link in, my, in the description below of this video. All right, so I'm going to bring up the left palette, just double clicking on this arrows and in the Z plugin, this is the C plugin palette that you can just click and dock to the left, uh, you will find the ambient occlusion palette. So this is basically it, right? So I'm going to show you, I have a clone of this just that it is easier and I'm going to click on flat mode. This is just on the render palette. You have preview and you have flat, so that shows a shadeless version. But I just have this one ready to show you the, the effect of the ambient occlusion, which is amazing. Um, this is actually a mask. So if I hold control, click and drag, you would actually clear that mask, right? Which is pretty, pretty handy. So the way that that works is you, with the default settings, you can click compute and you see will compute that ambient occlusion. Now the settings here are pretty self-explanatory once you understand what they do. The first three, distance, aperture and samples, uh, these three determine the quality of your ambient occlusion. Um, you won't see much difference between distance and sample. Samples is kind of like your um, the, the resolution in a way because it controls the amount of rays. So don't go crazy with this number. The only one that you might see a very um, very noticeable change is with the aperture. The aperture will change how sharp this mask is. So right now the default is at 90. So if I change this to let's say uh, 20 and click compute again, you'll see that the mask that we're gonna get is a little bit sharper, right? So there's not much gradient between the black or the dark areas and the white areas. Um, and that is just to do with that aperture that we changed to from 90 to 20. Right, so the other one is this smooth, I'll talk about that in a second, and the other ones are occlusion, volume, and resolution, as well as the recalculate button that is currently uh, disabled. So these three settings here, they have to do with multiple subtools. Right now there's a single subtool, so I'm going to go ahead and click on a new sphere, bring that one up, um, and I'm just going to have to duplicate it. Uh, hang on, I need to convert that into a um, polymesh 3D, there we go, and hold control, click and drag with the gizmo and split on mask. All right, now we can go ahead and click on compute again, this ambient occlusion. There's not gonna be any ambient occlusion really because there's no crevices or anything. Uh, but if we have these two subtools, as you can see here, if I click on occlusion volume, Seabridge now is going to calculate that ambient occlusion based on the proximity of the other, um, of the other mesh. So if I go into solo mode, it's kind of like hard to see, but you can sort of see a kind of like a ring of a shadow there. Um, maybe we can just decrease that a little bit. Try it again. Oops. Maybe not that much. Let's go back to thing 15. Should be all right. You kind of sort of see it. Um, it's not super visible. It's more visible if you have like more crevices and stuff like that. But I just want to show you that the um, this occlusion volume will take into account the proximity of contact shadows of other um, subtools like you have in here. And the resolution is just the quality as well of that um, occlusion volume base. Uh, so basically, yeah, you have these ones to control when you have multiple subtools, you can control the, the ambient occlusion from there. Now, the last one is, uh, by the way, this recalculate is if you change anything on the subtool. So if you go ahead and do that, um, you know, obviously it's going to change the, the contact of the shadows. You have to recalculate. Uh, let's just go back to this guy. And I'm going to show you how to use that sort of material blending, which is pretty cool. Um, so the, the last one that I mentioned that I haven't showed you is this smooth modifier or this smooth uh, slider. This basically softens and blurs that um, that mask. So this one essentially, if you don't touch anything else, any of the other 
um, settings and you just change this and recompute it, it's just the same thing as holding control and click on the mask like this to blur it. Or just go into the masking palette and use this blur mask multiple times so that you can actually see the difference. Yeah, so I'm just blurring the mask. So that would be the, the equivalent to this, but a smoothness of eight is a pretty decent one. So let's just clear that mask, toggle this off because we don't have multiple subtools in this example. Click Compute. And here we have our ambient occlusion. Again, I got this very sharp um, ambient occlusion because of the aperture is set to 15, but you know, you can play around with that. Now, once I have this, actually, <laughs> before I do that, let's clear the mask. And I'm going to toggle this preview so you can see it. I'm going to select the material that I want to have as a, as a general material or like for the most part. So let's select something, something like that. I think that's the one that I had in the, in the example. Um, these are custom materials as well that are, are available in the Seabrush, um, Seabrush Guides website as well. So now that I have that one, I'm going to make sure I have the material selected, the material switch, and I'm going to click on fill object. So now I have filled that whole object with this material. So now I can change, uh, sw switch between different materials and it won't make a difference. Now let's toggle back this flat mode and let's compute the amino occlusion. These um, crevices that you can see, that's just the, the material um, effect, but maybe it's a little bit easier if I just toggle the poly paint. Easy to see, there we go. So the poly paint obviously is just the material, right? Um, but I have calculated the ambient occlusion again, so we have this mask. All I'm going to do is hold control and click once on the canvas to invert that mask. So now we are blocking everything or protecting everything but those crevices that we want to use to fill with a different material. So now we can, let's go back to preview so that we can see what we're doing. Toggle this back on and let's select something like a, I don't know, like a gold material. I'm going to try to replicate the, the example that I gave you, right? And I'm going to click on fill object. There we go. So now we have this different material applied, which is pretty cool. And now we can clear that mask, which is essentially the occlusion. And if I get closer, you'll see, depending on the resolution that you have, but you can see that some edges are a little bit jagged. Um, again, this depends on the on the amount of the amount of polygons that you have in your creature or, or character, or whatever. Uh, I currently have four million polygons in just this subtool or this is this mesh, but there is a pretty cool trick um, if you were to render this within ZBrush, which is under the render palette. So I'm going to click on the render palette, drop that to the right, and this is not a new feature; it's been here for for a while, but it's a pretty handy one. So under the render properties, if you expand that out, you have this material blending this radius, materials blend radius. So that's basically talking about that blending between the two materials that we have in this case. So at one, if I do a render, let's click on BPR, nothing happens, right? You just get the, the cast shadow and, and all of that. But if you set this one to uh, six, just so that it's very easy to see the difference. Just pay attention to the difference between materials. I'm gonna click on BPR and you see a little bit of that blurriness. So it's up to you how much you want to blur it. I think maybe um, setting of two in this slider does the job just to soften it a little bit more. And this way you can recreate something pretty cool, uh, similar to what you would achieve with uh, generators, for example, you know, in some sus painter or something like that. Now, if you want to go a little bit further, what you can do is go to the masking palette under the tool palette, this one right here, and you have a bunch of options to, you know, further enhance this. So if I go to cavity, I can click on mask by cavity and that will toggle or, or target all of those crevices, which is pretty cool. So what you can do with that is again, invert the mask. You can do that from the masking palette or holding control and click. Um, and then you can just maybe add, I don't know, I'm just gonna give it a color like this just so that it's different. Oops, make sure it is RGB, not material, fill object, clear the mask. And now you have something slightly different, kind of like, um, a copper or rusted copper with the with the metal or the, the gold coming through. All right, so hopefully you have found this use of the ambient occlusion helpful. Again, just keep in mind that this, well, would generate is just a mask. So you can do a lot of different things with this mask. This is just one of the cool uses that I found for this feature. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.